Hey guys, it's definitely been a while, but the good news is, I'm Bayek. In today's humble opinion, we're giving you the finger in Assassin's Creed Origins. I find it amusing that this video game series romanticizes taking a leap of faith, like yeah, there's usually the iconic physics-defying bale of hay or a conveniently placed pool of water, but doesn't focusing on those kind of invalidate all the other leaps of faith that our characters take? Like when you just want to hop down onto a perch a foot or so beneath the ledge you're currently standing on, or you finish scaling 25 of 26 stories and Bayek decides that now, right now, in that instant, would be the perfect moment to test God in the universe? I suppose there's no inherent marketable fantasy to pander to and permanently joining your hip bones to your rib cage, but I'd think that those jumps would take far more faith than the ones you know you're going to survive unscathed, which, you know, is kind of the opposite of faith. Anyway, needless to say, Assassin's Creed Origins was quite a leap of faith when compared to its predecessors. Some of the crazier design choices included calling the game Origins and then putting it on Uplay, on-screen child murder, and forcing you to play an N-word. By which, of course, I mean Niket Yadet. They say that a lot in this game, and according to Urban Dictionary, the most trustworthy of all dictionaries, it means piece of misery. I bet he like that because he killed his son, huh? Spoiler alert. Now, I don't remember when I stopped playing the Assassin's Creed series. I remember playing the original, the sequel, Brotherhood, and I think I just started playing Revelations because I'd acquired the hook blade, but a combination of graphical issues, buggy climbing mechanics, and a general sense of disinterest made me turn the game off and simply never think to open it again. I wouldn't say I was burned out on the formula necessarily, it was more like I was tired of dealing with the bugs that prevented me from experiencing it to begin with, so thankfully I haven't been through enough to have the the jaded, cynical mindset that so many other fans had coming into it. Rather a sort of curiosity and hope that they'd finally managed to deal with some of the issues that had plagued them. Honestly, I'd say they did. Though it took me a while to figure out, there's now a climb button and a descend button. I wouldn't know when they made that distinction, but it was definitely a welcome addition. At first, it made me feel like a house cat in that I knew how to climb precariously high into things, but getting down was a whole different issue unless there was a leap of faith to be had. It was only mildly frustrating until I came to the point where I had to climb down into a well and just kept jumping across the top of it, at which point I became irate and googled what exactly the hell was up with this stupid piece of shit game. Finding out that there was a descend button changed everything, and I instantly realized how much more consistent it made climbing than the original camera and direction based mechanics. I also appreciate the changes they've made to the combat system. At first it didn't really feel like an Assassin's Creed game at all because it seemed more like it was too busy trying to be Dark Souls, but once you actually get the hidden blade and unlock special tools, things start falling into line. The new adaptation of Eagle Vision, in which you literally control an eagle to find objectives and out enemies at first feels contrived, but eventually finds its place as a strategic element in the increasingly stealth-oriented environments. I say increasingly stealth-oriented because in the very beginning it seems much easier to just eliminate small clusters of enemies, but as you get to more dangerous and densely populated areas, the change in combat mechanics means you can't just brute force them one by one. Unless you're very comfortable with keeping track of everyone, odds are that you're going to end up getting gang-banged, which admittedly makes more sense than everyone politely waiting in queue for you to lay down some whoop-ass. Another thing I liked was the open world aspect. Being able to seamlessly travel from place to place was refreshing when coming from a sort of linear map to map sort of expectation, especially when it comes to the level detail put into each and every location. It was absolutely gorgeous. I didn't much care for the leveling system locking half of that off though. To me that sort of just creates an artificial blockade and undermines the premise of an open world to begin with. As a completionist, I also didn't like that there wasn't a clearly defined percentage of completion on each of the mapped areas and perpetually felt the paranoia that I'd missed something because it was absent. With so many great things to say and so few and minor complaints, I'd say that Assassin's Creed Origins earns a spiffy 0 out of 10. Oh, what's the matter, Ubisoft? Feel like I wasted your time by setting up a promising review only to turn around and stab you in the pack? Well, don't worry. For every $10 you're willing to pay me, I'd be more than willing to raise your score a tenth of a point. You can find the offer in the score-saving portion of my store. Yes, while Assassin's Creed Origins did manage to breathe some life and ingenuity into the series, I can't help but feel majorly betrayed by the idea of spending real-world money to purchase time savers. Of course, I'm no expert, but when your marketing strategy team decides that it's a profitable and rational decision to charge players to experience playing less of your game? Maybe, just maybe, that mechanic should be reworked or thrown out altogether. But nah, let's make hunting down and collecting gold or crafting materials integral to effectively progressing through the game. I didn't even mind the mechanic all that much to begin with, but on principle, it pisses me off that a company disregards not only a player, but a patron of their brand's time and money. And it wasn't even on accident. They know it sucks ass, and they kept it in to generate cash flow from their little pay pigs. Way to spit in my open mouth. Thank you everyone for watching, and special thanks to the developers 
developers at Ubisoft specifically for making such a breathtaking game. I'd like to believe that it wasn't their decision to try and bleed their supporters financially dry or implement such awful mechanics that that would even be an option on the table. The game was good, the business side of game development is what ruined it. Until next time, remember that failure is not the worst case scenario to go on with your bad selves and stay awesome.